Uh, my name is Eugenia Vavra. I am, I cover the health and independence area. So uh, hello all, for all of you who I might not know yet, um, but <coughs> hello again to all those I do know. Uh, I need to talk about the evaluation piece. So really what you've done so far is you've told us about your agency. You've told us about your proposed strategies and you, you've told us you know who's going to do it and, and all these things. So. The exciting part of this work is now you get to show us or demonstrate the impact that that service is having. So the first step of that is who will be evaluated. Now, if most of you are familiar with the Community Impact Database, there's kind of two different types of data. There's agency output data. This stuff measures the number of things that you do. So you have numbers served. Maybe it's hours of service provided, or number of trips that are provided, number of meals, <coughs> that sort of thing. The indicator measurements are more of you know, how those kinds of services or activities that you've done have impacted your clients. So it, who, who will be evaluated? That might vary. So again, counting for activity outputs, but then also determining for that indicator measurement who do we want to survey? So just as a showing of hands, how many serve 300 or below for clients? Just raise them high so we all can see. OK. So then on the other spectrum, who serves over 1,000? Now, now you see it's kind of split. So really what that means is there might be different kinds of measurements that you use depending on how many that you serve. So those that serve 150 or so might be a little bit easier to be able to measure all of those client input. You know, maybe they're coming in weekly to, for a dining uh, center, so it might be easier to just, hey, can you fill out this survey? <laughs> might be a little bit more difficult to measure if you're having over a thousand clients. So you might want to focus in on a sample size. Um, you know, typically from a research background, 30% uh, is kind of a good benchmark in terms of trying to get back uh, survey responses. So that can be generalized to your, your population group. But what is the most meaningful is to align who you're surveying with what you're trying to measure. So for example, with Pat, with the Benton County Volunteer Program, she's going to be, you know, she's applying two different, for two different outcomes. She has her food shares program uh, that she might you know, survey, which might be a different population than who she's measuring for her safety mobility outcome, which are seniors or older adults that need volunteer transportation. So she might need two different kinds of surveys. So it's kind of sorting through all of that. Who is the population that you're going to survey or which outcome you're, you're uh, trying to achieve? <coughs> and when we talk about base, what we really are meaning is that point, you know, how many are you surveying? So based on previous data that you've done, um, how many surveys have, do you typically get back? So if you know that, well, you know, we have about 200 clients, we survey everybody, uh, but we typically get back 100 <coughs> surveys. So you might propose that you're going to be getting 100 surveys back and determine, depending on the outcome that you're trying to achieve, you know, maybe 80% of that 100 will demonstrate a change in their knowledge, skill, behavior. And so then you have your 80 in terms of number impacted. Depending on the time of year, that base means something different. So when it's a proposed base, that's what you're basing on your previous experience. That's why it was important that agencies had at least a couple years of data that they've been measuring so that they'll be able to base that number on something. So then when you get to your mid-year, you're actually giving the actual number. So maybe your proposed 100 surveys would come back, maybe only 75 came back. That's okay, but tell us that. Tell us, so by mid-year, we got 75 surveys that were returned, maybe 85% demonstrated that impact. Great, wonderful. And so then that'd be the calculation, and it'd be you know, 85 clients, just based on 85 out of 100. Um, and then your year end, again, 
same thing. So you sur survey again. Maybe this time you get, you know, 80 surveys. Great. Maybe this time it's 90%. That's wonderful. So again, it would be 90% uh, of that 80 would be your number that you would impact it. So in terms of the method that you will use to evaluate, again, this varies depending on the services that you provide. So maybe if you're doing more counseling work, that would be uh, an evaluation you do, kind of a pre-post, and then you have you offer the service, and then after that they fill out another, you know, they indicate their stress is reduced, or their, uh, maybe it's after six sessions that they actually evaluate if, you know, their behavior has changed, or they're, they have increased functioning, that sort of thing. So it really depends on the services <coughs> that are provided. Some folks might be able to get by measuring twice a year. Maybe they send out a survey, um, you know, for their mid-year evaluation, and they say, so has the services that have been provided to you increased your safety? Have they increased your mobility? Have they increased your knowledge in, in health? That kind of thing. But, but then by the year end, we want to know, you know, how far were you able to come? So really what we're looking at, what the volunteers are looking at is, you know, what you're proposed, if by mid-year you're you know meeting those targets, and then by year end, hopefully you've been able to come within about five percent. We're saying is an outcome to you for that. So, and again, is it a random method? Is it every five persons? It is. Is it every session? So you'll just have to kind of figure that out depending on the services you're providing. So, and again, we kind of I kind of talked about when you measure. Uh, we're kind of switching just a little different. Um, for proposed and mid-year, we do both of those in January. So I know in the past we've done you know, proposed in the August time frame, but we're gonna, we really wanna know, we wanna have a good idea in January what you think you might be wanting to achieve um, in January. So, cause that's really when we're doing the review for renewal funding, that kind of thing. So, so then the year end would be in August. So just the two times we have your January, your Proposing what you're going to do come, you know, July 1st of that year, um, and then you're also um, giving us mid-year feedback on that previous year. So it's kind of two, two in one. Is there any questions about that? I know that was. So you know who you want to measure. You know the impact you're trying to do. So how do you create a tool that will be able to do that? Well, certainly we don't want you to have to reinvent the wheel. If something's out there that you can use or pull from, you know, some of you have already, you know, you have measurements that you're doing, whether it's for another local funder or, you know, maybe it's a state or federal funder. So, you know, if that survey tool matches and will it be able to uh, demonstrate impact on the outcome that's aligned with, use that. You know, tell us in comment sections, you know, that, you know, this, we're using this survey, you know, maybe you, maybe they only do it once a year, you know, but, but let us know, let us understand what that time frame is. And then again, why, why you've chosen it, because it's, you know, it's out there, it's aligned, or maybe it, it is created by your agency, um, and that's okay too, but, but we just want to make sure that we're clearly understanding the kinds of questions you're asking to demonstrate that impact. So that when we get down to, you know, how do you derive your indicator measurements from the tool, some is going to be clear. It's you ask this question, this is the percentage that said yay or nay, or improved, that kind of thing. Some folks have a little bit more complicated. Maybe there's five different things that they kind of wrap up all into one, you know. But let us understand that, you know. If you're saying, you know, the percentage has in, improved, you know, tell us what improved means. You know, tell us the kinds of things that you're measuring um, for that. And really, you know, being able to tell us either the question numbers, um, that kind of thing, will just help it make us help it make it more clear, so we can show the volunteers that yes, they're measuring this, and this is how they're doing it. And then we really would like just a copy of that measurement tool uploaded to our database. Yes. Uh, if the measurement tool is so like your 
report from the service point, you would like us to upload a sample report from the service point? Sure. Absolutely. Does anyone hear that? And Judy, would you agree with If uh, this tool that they would like to use is a service point, like kind of data entry tool, would that be sufficient to upload that? And I'm seeing Judy's nodding, so yes. Well, and just to give you another example, too, we've met with Heritage um, and through our agency roundtable discussions, you know, have a better understanding of the kinds of things that they're measuring. So, well, why not? Why wouldn't we be able to use those same measurement tools? Let's not inundate, you know, our clients with all these different surveys. Let's try and streamline this process so it's less work for the clients, less work for you. Uh, so, please, you know, if there's ways that you can use that information to serve both means to that. So determining success. And I kind of touched on this when I was talking about, you know, the 85 that you propose and maybe you think 80, 80 or 90 years <coughs> and you stuck down to 80 for your end. But uh, really this is this is that demonstration of that knowledge, of the skill, you know, of the behavior that's been changed. So this doesn't mean number served. Because I know I've kind of already said that in terms of agency outputs are the numbers, the indicators are the percentage of change. But we still continue to see sometimes that agencies might think that, oh, you know, I serve 300, so I'm going to put 300 in the proposed. And by mid-year, you know, we've achieved 150 of that 300. And then by year end, wow, we've served, you know, 400. So then it looks like the percentages are you know, for proposed, well, they're going to serve 100, 100 percent, you know, of that, that 300. And then by mid-year, they're at 50 percent. And then by year end, it's 125 because they went over and beyond. Well, that's not really what we were looking for. We're looking for more of that survey data. So, and please use those comment fields to help us understand exactly what that number is meaning. Or if it's out of, you know, it's 100 out of your 500 clients, that kind of thing. And so how do you use all of this? We want to know. We want to know how is this meaningful to you? It's meaningful to us because it helps us demonstrate you know, the impact that your services are having. And we can communicate that to our volunteers who make those funding decisions, to the donors who contribute the dollars. But how do you as an agency use that information, whether it's to help get you know, more grants, that kind of thing. But, or maybe you're in a situation where you didn't get within 5% of what you had proposed. Uh, explain, you know, what might work be different moving forward. Maybe you've uh, had an open-ended question on your your survey tool, and some clients, you know, indicate that uh, maybe if you did this this way, you know, that might work better. And maybe it's you know five or six people. <coughs> so how how might you be able to use some of that information and um, improve things, and then? change, perhaps you'll change your measurement for your next proposed round. You know, maybe you thought, gosh, we want to do 85%. And then you get back and you realize, wow, only 76% were able to achieve that. Maybe we need to move that down. You know, and that's okay. But we need to understand exactly what went into making that change. Okay. This, this next slide quite, kind of gives you some ideas of how you might get that feedback, so whether it's written or verbal, at the end of the session, maybe it's, again, the client surveys we've talked about, um, interview style, um, or focus group, but, you know, uh, representation <coughs> of advisory or other boards, so, you know, do you have clients uh, participate on your boards, that kind of thing. And again, this area is 25 points, so... Uh, mentioning the idea of this satisfaction survey, uh, which you can definitely use um, you know, as a part of this process. I don't know that we don't want to necessarily track satisfaction as an indicator, but that definitely can be used as a way to get client feedback. 